from December 1991 to August in 1992, a serial killer tortured and murdered 12 women in Detroit and the neighboring city of Highland Park in Michigan. The bodies were primarily found in abandoned buildings after they had been assaulted and strangled to death. His motivation would later be revealed to be a hatred of prostitutes and women in general. This hatred stemmed from abuse he had suffered as a child and from witnessing his mother work as a prostitute. Benjamin Thomas Atkins, the Woodward Corridor Killer. Benjamin Atkins was born on August 26, 1968 in Detroit, Michigan. His family lived in an impoverished section of the city and both his parents abused drugs and alcohol. However, things got worse in 1970 when his father abandoned the family and his mother left him in an orphanage. In the orphanage, Atkins was beaten by the other children and at age 10 was raped by a member of staff. After this event, he faced constant harassment from the other kids and at age 15, he ran away to find his mother and older brother. He found them and stayed with them until the mid 80s. While there, he realized that his mother earned money as a prostitute. Both he and his brother saw her conducting business with clients when she forced them to accompany her while she turned tricks. This would spark a hatred for prostitutes in Atkins that would manifest itself through vicious murders in later years. After leaving his mother's house, Atkins lived on the streets of Detroit. Without an education, he worked in low-skill and manual labor jobs and stayed in homeless shelters when he could find an available bed. During this period, his friends described him positively except they noted that he became antisocial and spoke against women when under the influence of drugs and alcohol. The first known victim of Benjamin Atkins would survive the ordeal. Darlene Saunders was a 35-year-old woman in Highland Park, Michigan. She was assaulted and beaten in October of 1991 after she entered an abandoned building with the soon-to-be killer to smoke crack. It is likely that other victims were attacked before Saunders but did not come forward. 30-year-old Debbie Ann Friday would not be so lucky. She went missing on December 8th of 1991. Her body was found less than a week later on December 14th. She had been abused and sexually assaulted before she was strangled. The next victim was found during that same month. On the 30th of December, Bertha Jean Mason's body was found in Detroit. The 26-year-old had been lured to an abandoned building and attacked. She too had been subjected to the same depraved acts as the prior victims before she was strangled. The bodies began turning up back to back and on January 3rd, 1992, police were called to the scene of another murder. Patricia Cannon George was 36 when she died. Her body was found in Detroit in an abandoned building when crews came to demolish it. She was actually the first victim to be murdered, but was in the vacant structure for months before being discovered. There was a pause of just over three weeks before the next body was discovered. The remains of 39-year-old Vicky Trullo were discovered on January 25th, 1992. Around this time, police brought Benjamin Atkins in for questioning regarding the murders, but they lacked enough evidence to charge him with the crimes and were forced to let him go. The next crime scenes were back in Highland Park. Three victims were found on February 17th in an abandoned motel called the Monterey Motel by a man trying to strip plumbing parts from the building. They had been sexually assaulted like the prior victims, then strangled in three separate rooms. 34-year-old Valerie Trock was found in room 68. 23-year-old Juanita Hardy was found in room 35. The third victim was found in room 18 and is still unidentified. More than a month would pass before the next victim was discovered. The triple murders seemed to have satisfied Atkins' appetite for death, but on April 9, 1992, 38-year-old Brenda Mitchell was found. She too had been abused and strangled in what was becoming a familiar MO to the investigators. As if something had triggered the killer, he struck twice within a short period of time and another body was found that month. On April 15, 1992, 43-year-old Victoria Beasley Brown was found strangled in Highland Park. She had a lethal level of cocaine in her system, which led to her death being labeled as an overdose initially. There was a two month long pause in the murders that lasted until June of 1992. On the 15th, the body of 40 year old Joanne O'Rourke was found in Highland Park. 
The final known victims of Atkins were found on August 21, 1992. Osanina Waymer was only 22 years old and Latanya Smith was only 29. Their bodies were found left in abandoned buildings in Highland Park. During this time, there was turmoil between the FBI and the city administration of Detroit. Despite this, the crimes were so heinous that a coalition was formed between the two to catch the killer. The task force was finally able to identify and arrest Atkins with the help of Darlene Saunders on August 21st, 1992. He was initially picked up for trespassing, but after 12 hours of interrogation, Benjamin Atkins admitted to the murders. He was able to describe each murder down to the very clothing his victims wore. Atkins also confessed to two murders that had not been connected to the series by police, that of Osanina Waymer and Latanya Smith. Without this admission, it's likely their bodies would have taken months, if not years, to be found. Atkins said that his motivation was a hatred for women and prostitutes specifically. He would smoke crack with his victims and attack them, assaulting them sexually before strangling them to death. Benjamin Atkins went to trial in January of 1994. Because there was no physical evidence connecting him to the crimes, Saunders' testimony and Atkins' confession were the primary pieces of evidence used against him in court. After more than 150 witnesses were called to testify against him, including family members of his victims, Atkins was found guilty in April of 1994 after only a four-month trial. He was sentenced to 11 life terms in prison. Initially, Benjamin Atkins was sent to Charles Egler Reception Center, but because of his health, he was soon transferred to Duane Waters Hospital. He died there of an infection related to HIV on September 17, 1997, at 29 years old, after only four years in prison. <laughs>